Okay, let's start with you, Tatiana. Oh, 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 Bhagavad Gita, by which Arjuna was illumined by Lord Krishna himself, and which was composed of 18 chapters within the Mahabharata by the ancient sage Vyasa. O Divine Mother, destroyer of rebirth, who showers the nectar of oneness upon us. O Bhagavad Gita, my affectionate mother, on thee I meditate. All the Upanishads are the cows. The milker is the cowherd boy, Krishna. Arjuna is the calf and people of purified intellect are the drinkers. The milk is the supreme nectar of the Gita. My salutations to the Lord, who is the source of supreme bliss, whose grace makes the mute eloquent and the crippled cross mountains. Divine, I'm getting a bit of a recap of the chapter two yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, so we covered the. This is the yoga of the, of the threefold faith, so the three types of faith. Um, Active belief, that term active belief is a really beneficial term in terms of relating to faith and the concept of faith. Mm -hmm. um, faith, again, often used related to some highest faith, but, but faith is, uh, and Lord Krishna had said, faith is the nature of the person. Faith really defines the person. As a person's faith is, so is the person whatever we believe that we actually, that we put into is who we are at that point in time. Um, so we've discussed how it is that, uh, that the sattvic one and also the others um, will eat and then what's the mode of sacrifice for what will they sacrifice and how do they sacrifice like that. And now on austerity. Another way to relate to austerity, the, the first three, what he had been doing is he took food, what they eat, and he covered the, the three. So the, what the sattvic diet is, and then what the rajasic diet is, right? And then the tamasic diet, and then the sacrifice, the same thing. Here the order switched up a bit. So these three um, sutras, and we'll go back to the, to the first one of the three this morning and then cover the other two are really about sattvic. What does the sattvic person do? What do they say? And what do they think? And um, there's, a, there's a way to relate this as I was reviewing this morning, which can be helpful, which is austerity means control of oneself. So um, you practice austerity in order to take control. The reason that you fast, in a work, from a worldly sense, you fast because you want to lose weight. But also you fast because you want to change the habit. Correct? Mm -hmm. uh. And from a spiritual sense, the reason why you fast would also be you want to change the habit. Mm -hmm. uh. So there's one way to relate to austerity. Um, and, a, and a question would be, if I wanted only to do what is beneficial, beneficial for me and beneficial for all, right? And I wanted to speak only what is beneficial in the same way, and I wanted to think only what is beneficial, then practice of austerity would be related to how to get myself to do that. First, I have to know what is beneficial, action, what is beneficial speech, what is beneficial thought. And there is, and here, this is the, it, it, it's dealt with in the Upanishads as well. It's dealt with in other, in other traditions and other ways. Um, in the Buddhist tradition, what's being dealt with here is dealt with as part of the Eightfold Path, right action, 
right speech, right thought. Those are dealt with very directly. It's exactly the same as what Lord Krishna is dealing with here. So what is it? And then the austerity aspect of it is getting control of oneself to be in alignment with it. Um, if you wish to only act in a way that's beneficial, if you wish to speak in a way, only in a way that's beneficial, if you wish to think in a way that's only beneficial, then the question would be first, what is it? And then really it's upon us knowing what it is to bring ourselves into alignment with it. Right. So another way to relate to these three. Uh, okay, so first he speaks to right action. And this we had covered at the end of our discussion yesterday morning. Worship of the gods, or you can say worship of God. The gods are none other than aspects of the one absolute. So... Really, we're wanting to relate to the highest. The twice born, so the saints. The teachers and the wise, and then purity, straightforwardness, in terms of our practices, purity, straightforwardness, celibacy or control, self-control, and non-injury are called the austerities of the body. And we'd read the commentary from Swamiji yesterday. Just this again. He says, when all of our talents and faculties are Godward directed, which is really what worship of God is. Does that make sense? When all of our talents and faculties, so everything that we have, that we're capable of, all of the the wherewithal that is with me, when it's God we're directed, that's worship. So when they're restrained from wandering along the pleasure, the pleasure grooves of sense enjoyments, the threefold tra inner transformation is affected. So he's speaking of the grace of yoga. The work of yoga is what we do. And the grace of yoga is what comes in the inner world. This transformation that comes in the inner world. In the inner person. It should be remembered that while it is essential that the senses, the external physical organism, should be controlled, it is useless to waste one's inner powers foolishly, suppressing their natural urges such as hunger. The impulse to suppress any natural urge is often a very strong ego. Once again, the invisibly subtle middle path must be clearly seen by the grace of God and carefully trodden. The only aids in this spiritual march to the goal are constant vigilance, faith, and sincerity. Our master always stressed that the fact that if we take care of the positive side, i.e. worship of God, worship of the highest, the negative aspects, such as lust and anger, will take care of themselves. They'll die a natural death, is what he says. Um, otherwise, vain is the struggle to eradicate evil, because it always pops up some other way, like playing whack-a-mole. Anybody ever play whack-a-mole? <laughs> you know what that is? Do you know what that is, dude? No. Ah. So at, the, at an arcade, have you been to an arcade? Ah, so you might have seen it, but you might have just passed by it. Whack-a-mole is the, is the game. They have like a board with a backdrop in front of it, and they give you a little rubber mallet, rubber uh, fake leather coated mallet, and then there's a machinery underneath the board, and there are holes in it, I don't know how many boards, at least nine. Some of them have more. And these little moles, they're not real moles, of course. They're plastic moles. They pop up. And then very quickly, they drop back down. And if you could hit them before they pop back down, you get a point. And if you get enough points, you get a prize. So it's like being there, being aware, right on the edge, watching. 
like that. <laughs> but then invariably, what will happen? Pops up. Pops up somewhere else. <laughs> so eradicating evil without having, a, what does that mean? Eradicating the negative tendencies. So we tell ourselves, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that, right? Have we experienced this? Uh, ah, yes, dear. I don't wish to ever do it again. And now you focus on it, focus on it, focus on it. And you make some progress with it, but something else pops up somewhere else. And now I have some other habit. <laughs> ah, so trying to end addictions is very much like this. Mm. So what's being pointed out again is really the only way is to have a positive addiction. And there's only one positive addiction. <laughs> There's only one positive addiction, which has to do, you know, what, even what do we want? We want unconditional love, and that only exists in one place. It only exists in that which is not conditioned. Uh, and we want happiness ever after. That only exists in one place, the ever after place, which is the here and now place. <laughs> and so, so we're reminded there that of all of this, worship of God is number one. And then what are we doing when we're worshiping the twice born, the saint? It's the same, right? It's just that with the saint, we have the saint present with us in some way, either physically present or present in the stories, the, the writings or present online or something like that. And so... Uh, and of course, we have a lot of things that we can watch. We have a lot of things that we can read. We can read the romance novels and all of that. Uh, we have a lot of places we can go. Swami G said yesterday we could be at the bars right now. So obviously, there's there's a lot of advancement that's occurred. Um, uh, so, or we can imbibe in the saints and what the saints are saying. Uh, so, the Book of Mirdad is is such a book, you know. Dear. So yeah, it doesn't matter the tradition. It doesn't doesn't really matter the tradition. We have our own traditions, which are so beneficial for us because we need a center and they help us to find center. And we wish to honor it, right? But but it doesn't. The saints of any tradition are saying the same thing. Yeah. And then the and then the teachers. Um, so many teachers gave a good, really good discussion yesterday on teacher relationship and the wise. So worship there. Okay, that's the physical. Now speech. Speech which causes no excitement, which is truthful, pleasant, and beneficial. And then also with the speech, the practice of the study of the Veda are called the austerity of space, of speech. Now you would think that that um, study you just do with a book, but we're doing it now, right? Mm -hmm. so, so the organ of speech is being used, wants to be used. Uh, well. e excitement. Um, let's just take a minute with this. Speech which causes no excitement. Why? That will lead more to a rajasic type of state mm -hmm. coming down from suffering. More to rajas, rajas. And so, when you when you reflect on and consider that you're not speaking for yourself, see, there's our first mistake. That's the rajasic speech. I'm speaking to glorify myself. Now, if or to be worshipped myself, that's the habit <laughs> because you want something from it. They want to be seen a certain way. Um, old habit. Habit doesn't go anywhere good. <laughs> um, so now you want to speak for the benefit of the person that you're speaking with. So say that. Okay. So why not speech which causes it excitement? It's the same as what you said, but now it's related to the person that you're speaking to, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want them to get rajasic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you don't want them, you don't want to intentionally bring it forward. Uh, Swamiji, what if they're in a tamasic state where we're trying to get them to be a little bit more, let's get up and go here, so let's get this project done, let's get excited about this, let's, let's do it. Yeah, still excitement, no, would be said no. Um, it, you don't have to be excited to do something. Um, excitement always has its opposite. In the, so it always has its opposite. Uh, uh, excitement always leads to suffering. So you're not really wanting someone to get excited. You're wanting someone to be able to recognize their opportunity to recognize their ability to contribute, their ability to, to wake up, their ability to get up and do something that's beneficial. Uh, but wouldn't that be sattva? Wouldn't that be sattva? Yeah, you always want to encourage towards sattva. But from tamas to sattva, you cannot go straight, right? No, so you'll have to poke a little bit, but still you're not, you're not speaking in order to cause excitement. Okay. Uh, so I talked with Kartikeya. Sometimes Kartikeya, because of the medications that he has to take and all of that, tamas will be very much in Kartikeya. So it's not because you're choosing it, Kartike, you understand I'm saying this. So there's no judgment in it. Uh, but because of the medications and such, then, then Tamas is often there. But we know that, that if Tamas becomes too prevalent, you'll just lose yourself. You'll just fade away in Tamas and you'll get completely stuck. And we're wanting to encourage you to be with the Sangha and active in the Sangha in order to not lose yourself. Yes, in order not to waste this birth. Mm. Yeah? So Swamiji won't accept that he doesn't come to satsang. Even if he's in a lot of pain, Swamiji doesn't accept that he won't come to satsang. I tell him, you come in the back and you lie in the back of the room when we have satsang. Yes? Okay. So when I speak to him, I speak to him to get him up. But that's not rajas. It's more encouragement, I would think, right? Yeah. But it takes a little rajas for him to get up. Mm -hmm. right. huh? yeah. But rajas and excitement aren't the same. Oh, okay. it's a, it's a, in other words, it's possible to speak to him. And sometimes I'll raise my voice and I'll say, Come on, Kartikeya, get up right now. Do you want to die here? Now? <laughs> right, Kartikeya? Yeah. Yes. Now, does that cause excitement? Only enough to get up. <laughs> no more than is necessary. <laughs> so you could say a little bit. You don't have to take it exactly as a black and white, but certainly not in excess. <laughs> Truthful. Even the truthful one. Um, you know, most of what we consider to be truthful is not anyway. So truthful one is a very interesting one in terms of speaking that which is truthful. So you could say it, you could say it a different way. You could say not speaking intentionally what is untruthful like that. Um, you know, we'll hear, um, we'll have an idea that someone is such and such, someone is stupid. This will be an idea. So, so, and I hear this sometimes, you know, somebody says to someone else, you're stupid. Why did you do that? Well, I'm just telling them the truth. Not that kind of truth. <laughs> <laughs> not your truth. Not your truth. That's not what's being said. Not your truth. Not, your, not some independent truth. Not. Um, and ultimately, if we're going to just speak the truth, we won't talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Considering that the highest truth is silent. <laughs> uh, um, there's, a, there's a moral guidance which we're... Here's a case, this one in particular. 
where our intuitive guidance, our own intuitive guidance, um, will finally have to take over. The scriptural guidance will get us so far. And with the scriptural guidance, we do our best. Um, so there's a, there's a little story I was reading this morning from, from uh, Swami Satchidananda on, the, on this one, on Speaking Truthful. And he tells a story of a, of a girl who comes into an ashram and she's wearing jewels and all that, but she's also very, very um, upset, very scared. Someone's chasing her. And so the Swami says, okay, you go hide here. And then the person that was chasing her comes into the, comes into the ashram. And he says to the Swami, I'm looking for a girl dressed so-and-so. Um, is she here? And so you might think the truthful answer would be yes. <laughs> but that wouldn't be advisable. So he even tells the story of how the Swami would, would answer the question like, well, this is a this is a place of austerity. This is a this is a monastery. Girls don't come here. <laughs> like that. So which is really, you would say, not really a truth. It's a it's a deceit. It's an intentional deceit. So the the one in particular of these truthful is a very interesting one because um, what's most important is the next, which is beneficial. Um, wanting to come from the from the beneficial place within yourself, that well wisher, the speech is wanting to come from there. So more important for it to be beneficial, and then in the light of that, truthful and pleasant, not unpleasant, not disturbing, not sweet. Pleasant doesn't mean sweet, but not causing disturbance. Mm. Yes, so I would just say, like not being untruthful, like for yourself, but if it's like for others. Like we can, but it's both. Speech is generally conducted in intercourse. Huh? So both. Because in that example you gave, it's being on kind of untruthful, but for for a higher purpose. Beneficial, still beneficial, yeah. still beneficial. That's why, yeah. So beneficial is what's most important there. Right. Oh. Um, and then the last is austerity of thought. And here's what's said: serenity of mind. And now that's English. Um, the, this is an it, this is very interesting because the the Sanskrit that's being translated to serenity of mind there are two words that we're actually familiar with mana mana is what mind, mind very good and prasada and that's one we we hear but we have a limited understanding of. prasada is prasadam which is offering uh, it's sweet mm. it's sweet. Um, that's why prasadam is almost always sweet, but it but it's actually a divine quality. It's not a, it's not food. It is an offering because we offer whatever we think. Mm -hmm. So if you think badly of someone, that's your offering, mm -hmm. right? Um, my God, when we realize that, we know what Peace Pilgrim is saying. She mm -hmm. says, if you knew the power of your thought, you would never think a negative thought it again. It feels awesome. It, yeah, we feel it, everything. Mm -hmm. So mana prasadam is actually um, that sweetness in the mind, sweetness towards all, that motherly sweetness. The, it's, it's speaking of the thoughts being sweet. Um, serene, serenity, but but a sweet inner environment. It's a, a sweet inner environment. Um, good heartedness, which is complementary with that, of course. Silence. Now this is of thought. Silence. Self control. Purity of nature. This is called mental. Austerity. Mm. 
Just one. Good heartedness is not to be mistaken for mere freedom from blood pressure and palpitation. Krishna, you have caught us unawares. The heart cannot be good unless you and you alone reign supreme there. The godless good heart is a hypocrite's haven, the devil's paradise. When God is enthroned in it, goodwill prevails. Incidentally, goodwill on earth is only God's will flowing freely through a pure, egoless, and divine heart. The ego's goodwill is what one pays heavily for in business. <laughs> oh. So those are standards. Um, and we will find that, uh, I don't know how I lost track of it. I know how I lost track of it, but the the canvas that has the three of these. Um, having discussed it and having had the reference and having seen it, it's good to remind ourselves of it, the three. It helps you to have a standard that relates to your goal. What is it that you wish to embody in this life? We said yesterday, what is it that you wish to embody in this life? What are you willing to die for? The things that are happening in the world right now, they bring forth the concept of death a lot more. That's helpful. I'm not, I'm not saying the things that are happening are wonderful. But I'm saying that to, that to recognize that you have a limited amount of time in this particular round, to do something. And ultimately, it's not about doing something. It's about being something. Yes. Because whatever you do, you've been doing in order to become. And the question is, what will you be in this life? And what will you be is defined by what are you willing to be no matter what? <laughs> <laughs> right? No matter what. No matter what you're called, no matter what anyone does to you, no matter if the hangman's noose is, is right there at your neck, no matter. What will you be? No. Uh, jai. <laughs> jai ma. Jai ma. And then you are it but you will be it. Oh, so it's revealing. Yes, unveiling. Okay, so we'll close. Um, any other comments or questions on the discussion this morning? So all of what's being discussed, they are divine qualities, but as a practice, they're ways to reveal or unveil the divine, to live a life of no regret, to come to a place where we can live a life of no regret. Uh, where we don't have to come back. We don't have to fix something because we found a way to live where we're not breaking things. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Final prayers in RT. Page one seventy four. Om Om Triambakam Yajame Surandi Pushti Vardhanam Orai Rukmeva Bandhanam Mritor Mukshiyama Mritat Om Triambakam Yajame Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Vorvai Rukmeva Bandhanam Mritor Mokshiyama Mritat Om Triambakam Yajame Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Vorvai Rukmeva Bandhanam Mritor Mokshiyama Mritat Om Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu 
Sarve sham purnam bhavatu, Sarve sham mangalam bhavatu, Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, Sarve shantu niramaya, Sarve bhadrani pashantu, Makashi dukabhavave, Asatoma satgamaya, Tamasoma jyotir gamaya, Mrityor maamritam gamaya, Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudashate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishate Om Shanti 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 Hi In page 210. O adorable Lord, mercy and love, Salutations and prostrations unto thee. Thou art omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. Thou art Satchitananda. Thou art existence, knowledge, and bliss absolute. Thou art the indweller of all beings. Grant us an understanding heart, equal vision, balanced mind, faith, division, wisdom. Grant us inner spiritual strength to resist temptation and to control the mind. Free us from egoism, lust, anger, greed, hatred, and jealousy. Fill our hearts with divine virtues. Let us behold thee in all these names and forms. Let us serve thee in all these names and forms. Let us ever remember thee. Let us ever sing thy glories. Let thy name be ever on our lips. Let us abide in thee forever and ever. For all of the saints and sages of all the traditions, stand for